I got one. All right. Good evening. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father God, we thank you for this uh, beautiful day that you gave us to be out in your, your creation. Father, the things we're able to accomplish. And Father, we just thank you for each and every day of life that we have. We know it comes from you. Father, we're so thankful for your, your son who died for us. And Father, we just uh, give you all praise and glory for it. And thank you for this evening. Just uh, thank you for all the different things going on throughout the building. Just pray that you be with all those who are leading those. Father, we all be uplifted with you. And we ask this in your son's name. Amen. And Ephesians 6.18, and it says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. All right. Tell it to Jesus. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving over joys departed? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You know others, such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus.
Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Isaiah 118. Jesus paid it all. I hear the Savior say, my strength indeed is small. The weakness watch and pray, find in me thine own. Good evening, everyone. For our Lord's Supper time this morning, I just want to read to you a few verses from Acts chapter 2. And this is an important chapter for us to know and know the events of and know the history around it and, and what was going on because in Acts chapter 2 it describes what happened the day that the church of Christ began, the Lord's church. And at this point in time, uh, Jesus had already been crucified for the sins of all mankind. He had been buried in the ground for three days and then rose from the dead. And not only that, but had walked upon the earth for 40 days, uh, wit witnessing uh, himself to others and uh, teaching his apostles about how, what was going to happen when the church began and how they were going to be his witnesses from Jerusalem to Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And after that 40 days, he ascended back into heaven and told his apostles to wait in Jerusalem for the promised Holy Spirit, which was to come. And so they waited in, in Jerusalem, and they were in the house together uh, 10 days after that happened. So, this, so that put it at the day of Pentecost here in Acts chapter 2. And the city was filled with an estimated 3 million number of Jews. And... Uh, and they at once heard the sound of a rushing wind and, and heard the apostles begin to preach the first gospel message while speaking in different languages. The Bible calls it tongues, and what it means is different languages. And then uh, they began to question the apostles about it, and Peter preached that very first sermon. And I want to pick it up in Acts chapter 2, verse 29, where he said, Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. And who Peter is talking about is a very familiar person to the history of, of the Jewish nation. That would be King David, the same David that slew Goliath the giant with a sling and a, and a stone when he was a young man, who then went on to become the greatest king of, in Israel's history, and who received the promise of God that through his lineage, there would always be one who would sit upon his throne, one who would be descended uh, of him. And that descendant was the promised Messiah. And so in verse 30, Peter goes on to say and, and talks about David, but he, meaning David, was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place on his one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the, to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God had raised uh, this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it, exalted to the right hand of God. He has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out uh, what you now see and hear, meaning the preaching that the apostles were doing. 
For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore let all Israel be assured of this, God made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. And, and of course, the, the verses go on to say and talk about the people were cut to the heart when they heard that. They were convicted by the message and wondered what they could do to be saved. And Peter told them, uh, repent and be baptized, each and every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit. And on that day, about 3,000 souls were saved. And, and the church began. And since that time, we remember and observe the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ per the instructions of the apostles who received those instructions from Jesus and were, were inspired uh, writers of the Word of God, the New Testament that we now have, which completed the Word of God, put together with the Old Testament that they knew, from which Peter was quoting from uh, when he was quoting King David here in that first sermon. And so that's why we gather today on the first day of the week, as we have been taught since the very beginning of the church, by those who lay, helped to lay the foundation, Christ's apostles, who he ordained for that mission, and, and the work of the church continues year after year after year until the Lord returns. And, and so may we praise God for the forgiveness that we have, because Jesus paid the price for us. We sang tonight, he, he paid it all. And, and may we rejoice that we will not be left for dead in the grave, but that we will be resurrected just like our Lord and Savior and be with him for all of eternity. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, Almighty God, Lord, you are truly a great and awesome God, our great Lord and our King. Lord, we thank you that we uh, can be here this evening to gather once again uh, together as a body of Christ. Uh, Lord, what a blessing it is to be with your people, to hear your word preached. Help us to always hunger and thirst for that and, and help us to uh, be diligent about carrying out the mission of the church and to continue to make more disciples because, Lord, you died for all. And, and every single person on the, on the face of this earth needs to hear the gospel message of how your son Jesus paid the price for our sin took our place on the cross. He buried, it, he buried the, those penalties in the ground and resurrected from the, from the dead, defeating death, defeating sin, and giving us hope that death is not the end, but that we, we who put our faith in you and are obedient to the commands of your word will be with you for eternity forever. And Lord, that's all uh, according to your grace. And Lord, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would join me, let's, let's praise God for his continued blessings and his continued care in our lives. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, mighty God, Lord, you are our great God and our King, our Creator, our Father, the sustainer of all life, the giver of all our abilities and talents, and, and uh, giving us the 
the, the very lives that we have and the opportunities that we have to serve you and to, and to provide for our families. Lord, we thank you for that. We give you all praise and glory and everything. And, and Lord, may we never forget that and always humble ourselves to seek uh, your, help, your help and your guidance and your wisdom in all things. And Lord, we just ask for your continued blessing upon this congregation. Help us to do, the work, do your work as diligently as we can. Help us to be wise with, with the money that is given and use it to uh, further your kingdom and, and win people to Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. The next song we're going to sing is the Lord's Prayer. I don't know if I've ever sang the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to say it, but she won't allow me. So, so you guys sing with me, okay? Yeah, most of the time, that's not the easiest song to sing. Most of the time, we just hear the music of it. Like, who remembers? That was like like a, a staple wedding song, like, decades ago. Like, every, every wedding you went to, you, they played that. I have no idea why, but it was just one of those. Yeah, did she? Yep. Yep. But nobody sang it. Yeah. But but that used to be used to be a, a staple song at weddings. But we're going to be talking about uh, prayer tonight a little bit. If you want to turn to Luke chapter eleven, and as you're turning there, who remembers telephones with cords? Let's go back through a little bit of history here. Who remembers telephones that actually had cords on them? I I I remember those. I used to have have one in my house. And who remembers the touch tone? You know, that was the big deal for a while. And, and yeah. who, who remembers the, the rotary? You know, and, and took like 10 years to dial a number. Um, who remembers answering machines? Those are virtually a thing of the past. Um, <laughs> if you're saying you still have some of these things, you need to catch up a little bit. That's all... <laughs> I'm not, I'm not one who's usually up on all the new stuff, but uh, <laughs> we're not, I'm not going back that far, Denise. Man, how long you been here? All right. Who, remember, who remembers busy signals when you called somebody? And, and, and so you knew they were home, and so you're like, okay, do I wait one minute? Do I wait three minutes? Five minutes? I mean, you like call, 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 and... and, and th- yeah, <laughs> so, so, 
So, you know, we, we had a lot more patience then, or, or it really tested it, one or the other. Um, how, many, how many remember the party lines? I know that my parents' phone was a party line at one point in time. That was before my time, and I still don't understand those. I, I, that's the craziest idea to me that people, yeah, I, I don't know. Forget it. I don't know why you'd have other people on the same line with you, but... Uh, that's the way. That's the way it worked. Anybody remember crank phones? I hope, hopefully not. Yeah, uh, crank phones. They had to crank them up, and you had the earpiece, and you spoke into the mouthpiece. So, you know, communication has come a long way, uh, but there's a communication that has been in existence long before these smartphones that we have and these wireless phones that we have and that seem to be able to, you know, you can almost use them anywhere now, no matter where you go, and Google tracks you no matter where you're at, and they'll probably censor this video now, uh, but I'm calling them out, Google tracks, so uh, they, can't, they can't deny it. Uh, but there's somebody else that's been tracking us always, and we need to be concerned about that because uh, he knows everything that we do. He knows everything that we say. And, and he wants to hear from us. And he provided a way uh, for us to communicate to him. And that's what prayer is. Short and simple, if, if, if someone asks you the question, what is prayer? It is our wireless communication to God. That was in existence long before man ever come up with his own wireless communication. And and we have so many powerful tools today that we can use to stay in touch with people and share information, don't we? Uh, you know, just thinking about our, our phones that we have that, that now do email pictures and you can send web articles and videos and, and, and everything over them. You can use them to track your deer. You can use them for all kinds of stuff. And they're, they're powerful and they can do many different things, but it doesn't matter how powerful they are if it, if it, if you don't use it or you abuse it, uh, it, it's not going to do you much good, is it? And, and that's the same way with prayer. If, if, you're, if you don't use it or you abuse it or you don't use it at all, it's not going to do you much good uh, to be able to pray to God. It is our communication to God for many different reasons. And, and just like these, these tools that we have that, that help us to accomplish our day-to-day tasks and help us maintain relationships, with friends and family and do many other things, prayer to God accomplishes many different things for us. Mainly, our, it helps us maintain our relationship with God, which also in turn helps us maintain relationships with others. And so the question that we need to ask ourselves from time to time is what do we pray for? What do we pray for? What are the things that we're praying about? What is our motivation behind those prayers? Um, because, and we need to take the time to ask ourselves this question, because sometimes maybe we can get off track and we need to bring ourselves back to the spiritual path and our relationship with God, because what we pray for says a lot about our faith in God, okay? And so we need to ask ourselves, uh, do we only come to Him with problems? Is that the only reason we pray? Or do we only come to Him when we have big problems and never pray any other time? Or do we come with an attitude of repentance or a wish list when we come in prayer before God? Or do we pray about physical needs and never about the spiritual needs or not, or, or not a balance of both? We need to take time and evaluate this uh, so that we can evaluate our relationship with our Heavenly Father because our prayer lives are a direct reflection of our faith. And, and, and we're going to see that Jesus points this out here in Luke chapter 11. And I want you to pick up there in verse 1 with me. And it says, One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of, his, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples to pray. Okay? Now, now these guys, they were not, you know, unfamiliar with prayer. You know, they had prayed as children. They'd grown up in the Jewish nation. They, you know, the Jewish nation prayed all the time. And, and typically, they would go to the temple to pray. 
and, and remember in the temple, the high priest, one of his jobs was to go in and burn incense on the altar of incense, and the smoke would rise up out of the temple or the tabernacle, depending on which time in history you're talking about. And, and the smoke from the fire on that, that altar of incense represented the prayers of the people going up to God, and the priest was offering those prayers. And, and we don't do that any longer because we have our one and only high priest, and that's Jesus, and that's why we pray in Jesus' name. We pray, amen. He's our high priest interceding for us to God. When we offer our prayers up to God, they go through, they go through uh, Jesus. And, and so they were not unfamiliar with prayer. And John the Baptist is who they're talking about here, taught his disciples how to pray. They see Jesus praying. And, and, and my guess here is, is that they could tell that there was something different about how Jesus prayed versus how they prayed. And, and, and so... Uh, Jesus, they'd already seen him on the Sermon on the Mount talk about the subject of prayer, and he'd already kind of taught them about, about prayer there, and he offered this, this same model of prayer to go by, and, and this wasn't just something that you recite or we sing in a song, but this was a layout of things that we need to pray for, things that are important in our prayer life. And so he goes on here in, in, in chapter 11, verse 2, and gives them another lesson on this. He said, he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. And so uh, this, this is a repeat of what Jesus quoted in, in Matthew, or, or said in Matthew chapter 6, uh, but worded uh, just, diff just slightly differently. And again, these are things... These are aspects of our prayer lives that need to be a part of our prayer life. And we're not going to delve into these. What I want to delve more into is what Jesus has to say uh, in verses 5 through 13. So follow along with me if you would. In verse 5 he says, Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the, give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you uh, fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, uh, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Okay? And so, what I want us to focus on, like I said, because we've already gone over uh, the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6 uh, many weeks ago, and, and I want to focus more on what Jesus has to say about prayer in verses 5 through 13. And what he is, what, what he is driving at here is our, our prayer lives are a direct reflection of our faith. Okay, And, and so, first of all, when we go to pray to God, or when we're thinking about our lives, or when we're faced with, with any type of situation in our life, good or bad, or a struggle, or, or just day-to-day -day living, don't hesitate, don't hesitate to bring any need or desire to God in prayer. We have a Father who can help us and is willing to help us with anything in this life, big or small, uh, medium-sized or extra-large size, uh, or, or like they used to say from McDonald's, biggie size it, you know. Uh, we, can come, we can come to the Lord with any, any need or desire in prayer. And he will hear us, and he will answer us, and he will help us according to his will. And that's a key point to remember, that it's all according to his will. That doesn't mean he hasn't mapped out how our lives are going to go exactly, but he's only going to... Uh, give us the blessings and the things that we need as long as it doesn't go against his will or it helps to further his will 
or, or we have an attitude uh, of trying to do his will, and then he will and then he will bless us with the tools and the things that we need to accomplish that. Uh, when we've studied on prayer in the past, what we, what we can learn is, is that prayer is key to a healthy relationship with God. If prayer is our communication with God, and God communicates to, uh, back to us through his word, through the preaching and the teaching of it, then, then, uh, then a healthy prayer life, leads to a healthy relationship with our God. And, and, and it's no secret that communication is key to a healthy relationship, whether that be between friends, whether that be, be in, a, in, in a marriage, or whether it be with our relationship with God. I mean, there's been songs written about it. Uh, experts have done studies on it. Uh, comedians have routine after routine about uh, communication between husbands and wives and how they communicate differently. Uh, there's books written about it. Communi- communication is key to a healthy relationship. Therefore, we need to be uh, involved in a healthy prayer life to have a healthy relationship with God. You see, someone once wrote, without communication, there is no relationship. And without respect, there is no love. And without trust, there is no reason to continue. Now, I would put a caveat uh, on, on that statement. Um, sometimes trust gets broken, but trust can be rebuilt, okay? But, but, if, but if we have a relationship uh, built without communication or without respect or without trust, if you don't have those three things, then there cannot be a, a relationship, definitely not a healthy one. Uh, we need to be bringing things big or small to God in prayer because it shows our trust and our confidence in him to provide or help with whatever the need may be. And it shows that we recognize our dependence on him for everything and that we humbly accept it, okay? And, and, and I think about, uh, you know, j- just thinking about that, you know, bringing anything big or small to God in prayer, uh, one of the things that, that we try to do with do with the kids is we try to have a prayer time at every night before they go to bed and and even little Lauren she's going to be three May 31st uh, that girl she she loves she loves to pray now does she understand exactly what's going on right right now at this age no but she's learning that there's a God and, and that he's real and that we can talk to him and that it's important to talk to him that's what she's learning right now but but it, it cracks me up she know she under she would get this point, whether it's big or small. We need to pray pray to God about it, thank God for it. And and sometimes what what she'll do uh, when she's praying, uh, um, and we have to be good parents and be patient with this because you know we're we're getting tired and we're wanting to get through this and we got seven people to to do this you know and 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 but she'll she'll start praying. And, and thank God for her day, and then she'll, then she'll thank God for Jonathan and Jenna and Madeline and Emma and, uh, you know, all of them, and Mommy and Daddy, and she starts going around the room, and for Daddy's blue chair, and for uh, the table, and, and my princess doll, and, and, uh, and she, just, um, she just starts praying for, like, everything, and, and, and she's learning. You know, and I think sometimes, maybe as adults, we, we forget, we forget the, that aspect of prayer, you know, we need to be thankful for everything because if it wasn't for God, we would, have, we, we would have nothing. And that needs to be a part of our prayer life. You know, in this passage, Jesus hits on not letting our pride get in the way of, of coming to God in prayer about different things. You know, it, it's, it's our pride that always gets us into trouble, isn't it? You know, we'll, we'll, we'll hang off. We'll hang off of the roof of a house upside down while holding a two by four in one hand, nails in our teeth, and a hammer in the other because somebody said that we couldn't do it, or we said I can do it myself. You know, typically that's us men. You know, that's that, this is this would be us instead of asking for for help or an extra set of hands. You know, we're going to hang upside down, hammer in one hand, nails in the teeth, and a two by four in the other, and and then end up. Uh, falling off the roof, hurting ourselves, being in the hospital for days, and miss work and have a pain in our hip for the rest of our lives because we were too prideful to ask for help. And, and sometimes that's how it is with our prayer life. 
to God. We have help waiting for us. A greater help than, than anybody in this world has and the greatest help that we could always, that we could always lean on. You know, it is our pride that leads us to sin against God, and it is our pride that leads us to ignore his help or be afraid to seek it. Jesus told his disciples that they weren't able to cast the demon out of the man's son in Mark chapter 9 because of a lack of, of faith and prayer. Uh, you know, maybe, uh, thinking about that account, maybe they thought that since they were Jesus' disciples, that they could cast it out since they had had past success. They had cast demons out before Jesus had given them that power. And then they meet this demon, and they kind of maybe took their power for granted. And, and, and that's why they couldn't, they, they couldn't cast it out. And Jesus said, said that you couldn't cast it out because of a lack of faith and prayer. And, and they forgot, maybe they forgot where their power came from. And maybe that was their weakness in faith. You see, you can have plans that would fall right in the will of God, but won't get off the ground if you don't seek his assistance through prayer. For instance, if I was to ask any of the parents in this church, what are your hopes and your goals for your kids? And I hope that their answer would be, I, I, I want them to learn to, to have a deep faith in the Lord, and to walk faithfully in his ways all the days of their life, and to find a husband or a wife who does the same. I hope that that would be our, our answer. And, and, and I think that, that, would, that, that nobody would say, no, I don't want that for, for our kids. And, and maybe we want that for our kids, and that would be right in the will of God, wouldn't it? That would be a plan that would be right in the will of God. But if we don't do the things that, that, that it takes to instill that faith in them. And we don't exam live by example and model that faith in them. How successful do you think we're going to be in accomplishing that, even though it's right in the will of God? And then thirdly, and this needs to be the first thing, we need to pray about that. We need to not forget to pray for our kids and their future every single day. And we've got to put the legs to those prayers. Like I said, do the things that are necessary to instill that faith in them and model that faith in them. And, and, and we cannot forget to pray because if we don't pray about it, if we don't seek God's assistance, there's a whole lot of enemies and a whole lot of distractions out there that can blow up our plans, even though they're right in the will of God. So we can't forget what power we have in our corner, who's behind us, who can help us, with that and because like i said our plans can be right in the will of god but if we don't put it to him in prayer those plans can be quickly eroded away or blown apart so maybe uh the apostles lack of faith was that they knew something was different about this demon than others that they had faced and they didn't totally believe that they could do it and they forgot to pray to god and ask for his help in Matthew's account, Jesus said that they could move mountains if they had faith the size of a mustard seed, uh, which just means that you can do great things because of faith in Christ. Uh, it's not, and, and I want you to understand this, it's not the amount of faith that you have. It's the amount of faith in God's assistance. Okay? Maybe, uh, and, and let, me, let me put it to you, uh, this way what 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 do i mean by that it's not the amount of faith that you have in god but the amount of faith that you have in his assistance you know if we ask ourselves do you, do you have faith that god can help us through prayer the answer would be what yes but then we're faced with a situation and maybe we even pray about it and and and, and we and we ask the lord's help lord there's this co-worker there's this friend there's this relative whoever the case may be our son or our daughter we we, we want them to come to Christ or maybe they're struggling in a sin and, and, and they're going down a bad path and we pray for the Lord's help to get them off that path or to bring them to Christ, soften their heart. We pray those things. We believe that the preaching of the word, if we asked you, do, do you, don't you believe that the preaching of the word can change people's hearts? And you would say yes. But then when we think in the back of our head, we come back with, but it's probably really not going to happen. 
what kind of faith, amount of faith we're showing in the assistance of God. We have faith that, those, that God can help those things, that those things can work, that the Word of God works on people's hearts, that prayer works. But then in the back of our mind, we don't really expect it to happen. And so we need, to, we need to be careful about that. We need to put faith in God's assistance. If we pray about it and truly, truly believe it, then we can sit back and watch and things will happen. Maybe our weakness in faith is that we have been disobedient and feel unworthy to pray to God at times. Or maybe we even think that he may not forgive us. You know, sin does affect our prayer lives. And, and that's why it's, it's always important that when we come to God in prayer, uh, uh, that we seek the Lord's forgiveness for the sin in our life. And, 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 and I take that seriously in my life because our sin can hinder our prayers. Peter, Peter teaches us that. And, and, he, and he referenced that in the, in the context of husbands praying for your wives, okay? If you want your, your, your wife uh, to love you and have a good relationship with her, then you need to make sure you're not sinning against her or your prayers for that are going to be hindered and your prayers for other things are going to be hindered. And so it's not just in our relationship with our husband or our wife. It's, it's, it's in everything. So one of the first things that, that I do, this is, I'm just sharing you with what, what I do, practically in thinking about that is first i praise god in my prayer just like in the model of prayer it tells us to do our father who art in heaven you know, recognize his greatness one of the first things i do is is ask for forgiveness for any sins that i know that i've committed or maybe that i have have forgotten about because i don't want what i'm about to pray for to be hindered. And that might be a brother or sister in Christ who, who is maybe going to have a surgery or a brother or, or, or sister in Christ who is, who is uh, struggling with their salvation or maybe a brother or sister in Christ who, who's struggling with some type of other trial in their life and they've asked me to pray for that. And, and, and so I get the slate clear, and, and so to speak. I get the slate clear so that my prayer for them will not be hindered. Or if I'm praying about something personal, I don't want that prayer to be hindered. And so we need to have a, a repentant heart before God when we come to him in prayer. And, and we need not to be afraid, uh, not be afraid that just because we have sinned against God, that we're unworthy to pray to him or that he may not forgive us. If we have a repentant heart and we stand in the grace of God because we have been buried with Christ for the forgiveness of our sins, God is willing to forgive. Let us not forget who it is that we are praying for. And at times we have to remind ourselves of that and not neglect praying and seeking his help in those moments. And we need to remember that our prayers are not some, some wish floating in the air to some star as someone once quoted. Why wish upon a star when you can pray to the one who created it? That's, that's a pretty good statement. Uh, you know, I'm not creative enough to come up with things like that, but that, that's a good summation of kind of what prayer is like. Don't, don't, it's not a wish upon a star. And why do that? When you can pray to the one who created it. We have a real power uh, behind us when we pray. And maybe at times, as this passage here in Luke chapter 11 points out, we are afraid or embarrassed to ask God for help or feel that we shouldn't ask for his help in certain situations and jesus gave the example here of of having to go and ask a friend for some bread because you weren't prepared uh for a visitor okay uh and and just and just think of that that right there say somebody comes over to your house and you don't have bread to offer them how many here honestly are you going to go next door to your neighbor or to a friend and say, hey, do you have some bread that I can give? I got some, vi I got some people over. I don't have any bread to give them. How many of you would do that? Probably none of us, right? Probably none of us. We'd be so embarrassed. We'd be like, no way. We, we, would, go, we would whip up the flour and we would make our own bread or drive to the store and get our own bread and then go on across the street or to a neighbor and ask somebody for bread because we got somebody in our house. Um, because we would feel like we're not meeting their, their need ourselves, and we would be too embarrassed to do that. 
And, and this is the example that Jesus gives. And it puts, things, puts last week's sermon in a little bit of perspective here. You know, talking about Mary and Martha and Jesus and his apostles visiting their house. And Martha was going around trying to prepare everything and got upset that Mary wasn't helping, right? And, and you think about that. In, in that day and time, Jesus didn't get on his cell phone and say, Hey, Martha and Mary, hey, we're coming in about an hour. Is that okay? No, he just showed up. Today we'd be like, well, that was rude, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there, there, was, there was no communication ahead of time. If somebody came over to your house, you just had to have it. You just had to have it on hand. And they didn't have very good refrigeration. They didn't have the freezers and things like we do now. And, and, and yet the, ho- the hospitality was, wasn't any different. You still prepared for your guests. And sometimes that meant you might need, uh, you, you might need some help. And, and that's what Jesus is, is saying here, is, is to not be afraid or ashamed or embarrassed to come to God in prayer. And he gives this example of, of a friend, uh, of a person who, who had a visitor come in unannounced, and they didn't have any bread to serve them. And so they go to a friend, knock on his door, late at night. And that was another thing. Whenever you got there is whenever you got there. There weren't any scheduled flights or, or buses or, or, you know, I'm, I'm coming at this such and such time. I mean, they barely had letters in that day and time to announce their, their arrival. And so when a person got there is when they got there, and, and they were hungry. So they went in the middle of the night and knocked on the door. Do you have any bread I can have? No, I'm not going to get up and give any bread. We're already all asleep. Got my family in bed in the bed here with, with me. I'm not going to get up. But Jesus said, the friend will get up not because you're friends, but because he realizes he realizes how much it took for them to humble themselves and come and ask for that help, even though it was a little thing like bread. And, and, and so that's why he gets up and he will give them what they need, he says. And the friend here is God. And isn't that something? We can go to God in prayer at any time. It doesn't matter whether it's your prayer time at 8 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock in the morning or, or, or whether you do it in the afternoon or whether uh, something, something has you up all night and you're worrying and you, and you can't sleep. Take it to God in prayer. That's happened to me. I've done it. And when you pray about it, guess what? A lot of times you're able to go back to sleep that's not by accident see when we hand things over to god in prayer and seek his help no matter what hour of the day it is he's there to help and he will answer and he will and he will give us what we need and and god knows the motives of our hearts he knows the humbleness or the pridefulness of our hearts and 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 so because he knows how much it took for us to humble ourselves and come to him and ask, he will give us what we need. You know, never doubt what one prayer can do. We need to remember that. Never doubt what one prayer can do. Prayer is a powerful weapon that we have, as evidenced in Scripture. It was one prayer of Abraham that saved Lot and his daughters from destruction. It was one prayer of Moses that saved the children of Israel from destruction. It was one prayer of Elijah that brought, down, that, that brought uh, drought upon Israel for three and a half years to chastise them for their disobedience and their idolatry. And it was one prayer that brought rain back to the land. In James 5.16 it says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. You know, if we're struggling with a sin in our life or a temptation or any type of a problem uh, where our salvation is in jeopardy, the Bible tells us that we need to go to someone in the faith that we can trust and we need to share that with them and ask for them to pray for us because prayer is powerful. It can lead to our healing. And the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective, James says. And it was one prayer that gave Samuel to Hannah. And remember, Samuel was a great judge and a great priest before the Lord. 
But we must ask, we must seek, and we must knock with the right motives. Um, I think of a particular episode of, of this kids show. Uh, many of you, are pro- I, I would guess, are probably not familiar with it. I haven't even seen it for, for a while. But for a period of time, my kids liked, we came across this, this cartoon called Masha and the Bear. And, and there's this bear that this little girl always plays with. And, and, uh, and she's over at his house one, one day, and he's working some dough, and he's making these uh, meat-filled pastries, and she wants to help, and he's not letting her help, and, and she and she's, uh, keeps trying and trying, grabbing all the different tools and trying to grab the dough, and, and, and he stops her and, and kind of, uh, usually Bear doesn't say anything, and just she, she kind of gets the point uh, that she needs to ask, and she goes, but I know the magic word, gimme. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and we need to make sure we have the right motives when we come to God. Do we have a gimme, gimme, gimme kind of prayer life, or are we seeking to improve the kingdom? Are we seeking to improve the kingdom? You know, what, what is it that we are praying for? Because our prayer life is a reflection of our faith in God. God isn't going to uh, make somebody rich just for the sake of them being financially well off. Jesus said in this passage, ask and, 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 uh, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. Okay, That doesn't mean that, that whatever we ask for, God's just going to give it to us. Uh, he's just not going to make us rich just for the sake of being financially well off. It's got to play out uh, in accordance with his will and his will being done. And he's not going to bless us with plenty of food to, to eat just so that we can get fat and lazy, right? He would want us to share that with, with others. And he, wants us, and he wants to bless us abundantly. And many of us are blessed uh, uh, abundantly. James 4, uh, chap, uh, chapter 4, verses 2 through 3, he says, You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. And so what, why are we praying for the things that we are to God? Is it a gimme, gimme, gimme attitude? Or is it so that we can uh, continue in our lives and continue in the work of his kingdom and seek to help others? You know, what, what are our motivations? Remember that we must first seek God's will to be done. Uh, and, and, we will ans- and, and he will answer us in different ways and at the proper time. Sometimes he answers through uh, his word, whether, it be, be, whether it's being preached, whether it's being taught, or whether it's just in your personal devotion time. Sometimes we come across the answers to our prayers, and that's God speaking back, back to us. And, and you know, I'm not meaning by an audible voice, but through the word of God. And, and a lot of times we will find the answers to our prayers just simply by having faith in God and being obedient to his word. And, and maybe we need to seek out what the proper obedience is in certain situations, and that's what we need to search the Scriptures out to learn how to handle certain situations that we pray about. But don't forget to pray. Don't take all that responsibility on yourself. Seek His help, and He will guide you. He will help you. He will be there for you, and things will work out better than you planned. I guarantee it. Sometimes uh, He answers through the free actions of free men created with free wills. Uh, okay, sometimes we may go to the Lord in prayer with certain problems or desires upon our hearts, and we don't know it, but behind the scenes, God starts, move, God starts putting a, a, a bug in somebody's ear, and they choose to act on the will of God. They choose to do what God would have them to do, and through a series of actions from, uh, from free men who put freely their faith in God, our needs are met. I've experienced that in my life. And, and, I'm, and I'm sure that probably many of you have too. Sometimes through his providential actions in this world, God answers our prayers. And that's where God intervenes to make sure that his will gets done. And that's usually in, in terms of his plan of redemption, the furtherance of his, his kingdom. And a lot of times he does this in little bits over time that sometimes can be seen in, in hindsight that we can see clearly from behind, but we couldn't see it happening as we were going through it per se. You know, preachers always joke about how you can pray and pray for God to give you a million dollars. 
and a million dollars isn't going to fall into your lap. But think about this. God does give good gifts. And he has given many of us more than a million dollars in our lifetime. If you just take the time and do the math. If you work a job, per se, and you're only getting paid $40,000 a year, but you work that job for 30 years, that equals $1.2 million. And so God blesses us beyond what we could ever imagine. And sometimes we take for granted what we do have and don't realize the blessings that he is giving us. Whenever we pray for God to supply our daily needs, it might not be exactly what we dream our daily needs to be. He sustained John the Baptist, if you remember, on just locusts and honey. I've often joked with, with my wife, Erin, when, when she gets on me about my snack habits, and, and, and I say, well, if God could, could sustain John the Baptist on locusts and honey, he can sustain me on Cheez-Its and Chips Ahoy. And, and I, I say that jokingly. Um, you see, we can't just have a, a gimme, gimme attitude behind our prayer requests. God is not a slave or a genie to be nip, manipulated at our convenience. Just because he hears our prayers doesn't mean he's forced to answer them how we want him to. In other, in other words, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, he will answer our prayers according to his will and what we need most at the proper time. And that means that we may not get the answer that we want or in the manner that we want it or in the time frame that we want it. Uh, but when we ask, it shows our dependence and trust on God. And when we seek, it shows our personal effort to bring God's blessings and when we knock, it shows the steadfastness and strengthening of our faith as we don't lose hope while we grow through trials until God gets up and opens the door. Many people look for or want or even expect the miraculous, the, the miraculous answer to prayer. And, and I want you to think about something. Is our God less holy or less powerful or less amazing if he doesn't answer in a miraculous way? Is answering our prayers through the living word of God not amazing? Is answering our prayers through the God-given talents of men and women not, uh, does that not bring glory to God? Is answering our prayers through the God-built inability of our bodies to heal themselves not the work of an awesome God? And the answer is yes. We have a powerful God. He's always there for us. He's always taking care for us. And he doesn't have to do it in a miraculous way. He doesn't even have to do it in a way that we would even know that he's doing it. And it would be not be less amazing or, left, or le less compassionate of him. You know, think about the, the, this past year. In one of the prayers that I kept praying, and, 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 my, and my hope was, was I kept praying, Lord, you know, because everybody kept praying, take, take the coronavirus away, take it away, take it away. And I, pro and I figured that it probably just wasn't going to happen that way. And so I changed my prayer and I said, Lord, I, I, through all this, please may it be known that if it, that if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't get through this. That, was, that was, became my prayer. That God would, would work and move in a way to put an end to all this in a way that people could not mistake that he had a hand in it. I do believe that he has answered that prayer. But I think that there are many who miss that fact. I mean, think about what we've gone through this last year. What does the media, what do certain politicians just want us to focus on? The death. There's always death in this life. We can't escape that. But there's a God who has healed many, many people. There's a God who gave abilities and talents to thousands of people who have helped all those people. He had things in place ahead of time. 
we've been working from in, in a reactionary manner from behind. We've been behind the eight ball, per se, the whole time, haven't we? Thinking that we can beat it. Everybody's just tired. Oh, if we get a vaccine, if we get a vaccine, if we get a vaccine, you know, that, that's going to be it. We'll put an end to all this. That's yet to be seen. I'm skeptical of that. That's just my opinion. Just knowing how things have gone throughout history in my 40 years of life and what I've studied in the past. But that doesn't mean that there's no hope. That doesn't mean that God's not working. That doesn't mean that, that some of this might be a chastisement to get people to wake up to the fragileness of life and the need to repent and turn to God. There's a lot of different reasons things are happening. But we have a God who gave people the ability to create a vaccine that hopefully helps people. I don't know how well it really does. So I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that's what you got to go do. But we have a God who if it wasn't for him, those things wouldn't even be possible. And so God has worked in a way that it should be unmistakable that we wouldn't be getting through all this if it wasn't for him. And I don't care whether it's coronavirus, I don't care whether it's heart attacks, I don't care whether it's uh, the measles, the mumps, the, the H1N1, I don't care what it is. If it wasn't for God, we wouldn't be getting through any of it. And we need to remember the power that we have in prayer. And I know, and I know for a fact many people who have, who, have, who have contracted the virus this year and people have prayed and prayed and prayed for them. And those people have survived. Those people have survived. There's also been people who have gone on to be with the Lord in heaven. And what did Paul say? To live is for Christ and to die is gain. And we need to remember that as Christians. We win no matter what. We win no matter what. Prayer is powerful because when we pray, we are praying to a mighty God. Prayer gives us the power to do the will of God, the power to receive our daily bread, the power to seek forgiveness and forgive others, and the power to avoid temptation. My prayer for you tonight is to be obedient to the will of Christ. And that's my prayer for all of us, including myself. And for our prayer lives to be a reflection of our faith. Prayer is asking, I want you to remember this, prayer is asking God to align you with His will rather than asking Him to be aligned with ours. That's what prayer does for us. Now, there might be someone here tonight who has not given their life to Christ. Would you tonight align yourself with him? Receive the forgiveness of your sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit by repenting of that, confessing him as Lord, the Son of God, and being immersed in the waters of baptism. If there's someone out there watching tonight that has not made that decision, please call us. Talk to us about that. And you can be a part of God's family and have a living hope where we win either way, no matter what happens in this life. And we have a God who's there for us at all times that we can talk to at all times. Once you make that decision, we stand and sing our hymn of invitation.
good to see everybody out tonight. And uh, let's, be in, let's do what that song says and be in prayer for somebody uh, this week. Uh, would you close in, in prayer with me? Dear Heavenly Father, Almighty God, Lord, you are truly a great and awesome God. And Lord, we are humbled to be able to uh, bow our heads and, and come to you in prayer. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the creator of this universe. Lord, we can enter right into your throne room and, and lay our needs and lay our hearts at your feet. And we know that your son, Jesus Christ, intercedes on our behalf. And sometimes, Lord, we go through things that we don't even know exactly how to pray or what to ask for. And your spirit that lives inside of us uh, makes known our heart to you. And we thank you for that. And Lord, we just uh, ask that you would just help us, guide us through your word as we study and as we learn and make decisions according to your will in this life. Help us, Lord, to seek out those we know who need to hear about your son, Jesus, and ask you to meet our needs so that we can make that possible to, to be a witness to them and bring them to Christ. Lord, thank you for this church. Thank you for the faithfulness of your people. Thank you that we can pray to you and, st and ask for your guidance and your help and Lord we sure need it and we give you all the praise and the glory and in Jesus name we pray Amen, Amen.